We serve a miracle-working God. And we're going to go to him right now in prayer before we go to, into worship. Why don't we lift our hands and lift our voices tonight? Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and lift up your name. For we are such so privileged to be able to come and worship you freely as we choose. And we just come tonight with open hearts and open minds ready to give you praise, glory, and honor for who you are and what you've done. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Why don't we give them a hand clap of praise tonight? Worship with us as we sing.
Yes, I will choose to praise him even when my heart is heavy. Amen. Oh, I appreciate the Lord this evening. Appreciate our worship teams and ushering in the spirit of the Lord this evening. Amen. Give our worship teams a round of applause for all the work that they do. Amen. Like Milam said, it's midweek. It's not always easy to get here. It's not always tired. But uh, the Lord comes to refresh. Amen. Refresh and renew. Amen. If you're able to stand, we ask that you stand. We'll uh, go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Uh, it's good to see Sister Samantha here. I thought I saw her walk in. Continue to remember her. She needs a healing touch. Amen. I saw Crystal walk in. Good to see her. Amen. Prayer works. Amen. Even if it's just an email prayer, it works. The Lord hears it. Uh, we ask that you lift up the family of Michael Hamblin. Uh, his uncle Marty is in ICU is in, and is on a ventilator. So we ask that you lift him up and his family. Continue to, the Lord, strengthen them. It's good to see Sister Joyce here again. Continue to remember and pray for her. Amen. All those with unspoken, signified by signal raising hands, amen. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for the mercy and grace that you bestowed upon us again this day. Lord, you are a healing God, a comforter, Lord, in a time of sorrow. Lord, you are faithful and able, Lord. We praise you and glorify your holy name. In Jesus, we appreciate you. We thank you for who you are. Glory and honor be given unto you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, Jesus, we lift you up. We thank you for who you are. Lord, you are a comforter. Oh, you see these prayer requests, Lord. We ask that you move in each and every situation. Oh, Lord, we ask you. See, Sister Samantha, Lord. You are a healer, Lord. Take this pain, Lord Jesus. Strengthen her arm, Lord. Oh, heal her arm, Lord Jesus. Oh, let her get a good report, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah knowing that coming back with a testimony, Lord, how once again you have delivered, how you have provided, amen, oh, Jesus, the spoken and the unspoken, Lord, we lift each and every prayer request to you in faith, Lord, declaring that these will become a testimony, how once again you have become, oh, Jesus, how you have provided, Lord, oh, Jesus, Lord, you are so worthy, Jesus, hallelujah, we thank you for who you are. says in Jesus name you may be seated a couple quick announcements uh, this evening uh, continue to remember the um, still looking for some volunteer assistance needed for Sunday school so if you feel the urge or the, the, the leading of the spirit to volunteer for a Sunday school position uh, see, see either brother Greg sister Tasha uh, Paul Crystal one of them from the Sunday school leadership team They'll be able to help you there. Uh, tomorrow night is end, end Time Life Group, uh, Thursday here at the, at the church, 630. Uh, any questions about that, you can see the banks on that. Uh, corn maze on Friday, annual corn maze. Kids, let's go get lost in the corn. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> and Golden Pillars, you have your uh, Christmas banquet coming up on Thursday, November 2nd. Uh, if the ushers will come forth at this time. Our uh, offering scripture tonight comes from Genesis 28 and 22. It says, And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this offering for the gift and the giver, Lord, that it may go forth and bless your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
which we stand upon. Amen. Where would we be if it was not for the Lord? Amen. All that we do is for Him. Amen. All that we do is because of Him. Amen. He captured our hearts. Amen. Our first love. There's no greater love we can ever have than that of the Lord. Amen. There's nothing like this relationship. Amen. I'm so glad that He saved me. So glad that He set us free. Amen. What a mighty God we serve, amen. We're going to go to Romans 4 and 21, amen. I got two dilemmas right now. I'm hungry for one, and two, I'm tired, amen. But I know we serve a good God, and I'm in the atmosphere, man. I just feel, feel excited about what the Lord is doing, amen. God is so good, so good. Just praying, Lord, help me beat this tiredness. I don't know if it's the weather or not. I just like, God is so good. Romans 4 and 21. 
amen, says, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God just doesn't say it, God does it. Amen. And I'm persuaded because I done test and seen that God's goodness is good because of things he's told me. He's brought it to pass. Amen. That's the God we serve. God always keeps his word. Amen. I can praise him because he always keeps his word. His word has never failed me. Amen. If you'll put your Bibles down, let's ask the Lord to bless this word tonight. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for our heart and our mind to be here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that fills this place, Lord. Lord, we're excited to be in your presence. We're excited to be at church. We're, we're excited, Lord Jesus, just to be in your very presence, Lord. Lord, and to be with people of precious like faith, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Jesus. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God, Jesus. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus. You're the great I am. Lord, you're all that we need, all that we will ever need, Lord, we know is found in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and let everybody say amen. 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 Smile at your neighbors, you're being seated. Amen. God, doesn't, God just doesn't speak words, just to be speaking words. His words are never idle. They are always quick and powerful. He never promises and fails to deliver. Amen. God always keeps his word. Amen. Always. Amen. Life has an abrasiveness about it that can test the strongest of constitutions and try the greatest of faith. Life just comes at us. It comes at us hard sometimes. It hits us from all angles. Amen. But there's just something about it. We'll just trust and depend upon God. He'll see us through to the end. Amen. It's in those times and in those trials, those hills and those valleys that we discover more about God and we become more persuaded. Amen. That he was always faithful and true to his word. Amen. It's often been described as hills and valleys. There are situations in which no matter how much we believe and trust God, our souls are tried. Amen. The longer I live for God, the more I'm getting this word. I understand these trials come and they test me. Amen. And the good thing is, sometimes you just got to float in it and just let God build you up and strengthen you. Amen. And just go with it and we'll just watch God be God. Amen. There are three situations that try our faith and cause us to descend into a valley of discouragement if we will allow it. Amen. One is when the things I, th I believe should never happen, they happen. All that will never happen. It ain't going to happen. You're, you're out of your mind if you think it's going to happen. And guess what? It happens. What in the world happened there? Amen. Another is when things I think should happen never happen. Oh, man, this is going to happen, and then it, it never comes to pass. When, when, when's this going to come to pass? When's this going to happen? I just knew this was going to happen. And the third is some, in some ways is the most difficult to deal with is when things I believe should happen now happen much later. Amen. Oh, I was just expecting this to happen. When's this going to happen? Two, three years down the road, boom, it comes to pass. Like, well, Lord, you're an on-time God. Amen. It's not always our will. It's not always our way, but it's truly his. Amen. We just have to be patient and understand if God said it, it's going to happen. Amen. All of us go through these trying periods, and we struggle. Our faith, although it may be grounded in God's word, is assaulted sometimes by these times. Amen. We just take a beat and we just let it get us down sometimes. Amen. But we just got to continue to hold on. See, I want to deliver a message to you tonight. No matter how deep the valley and no matter how dark the night is, you can take to heart one thing. God always keeps his word. He does not fail. He's an always on time. Again, it doesn't come when I want it to come. It comes when he wants it to come. It comes, but it definitely comes when I need it the most. Amen. He's always true to his word. He promises he keeps them to the end. Second Chronicles tells of an earth-shaking event. Amen. The nation of Judah has come to its own time of judgment because of their folly and their lack of faith. They had fallen into sin yet again. Amen. They'd go strong for a while, then they'd just drift off. They'd go good, then they'd fall off. See, backsliding had become a common part of their existence. Amen. They knew they could fall away and always come back to God. 
Amen. And there's a danger in that sometimes because sometimes God will harden his heart, not only his heart, but your heart. Yes. Amen. So you got to be careful playing that game. Yes. Amen. Don't paddicate with him. He says, I want all of you at all times. Amen. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. Fight through this. Push through this. Do whatever you got to do to make this relationship work. Yes. Amen. God in his patience, at this time, God's patience has got exalted with him. Finally, he brought a judgment through Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians. His armies marched into Judah, burning and looting as they went. The people were slaughtered and remnant marched away, from the end, marched away into captivity. It seemed like the end of Judah just at the end, just as the end had come to the northern tribes. Both, got, but God had a different plan for Judah. He had told them this judgment was coming. He had gave them fair warning. Hey, you need to get together. You know, this is coming. This is going to come. That's why we got to make sure we have an ear to hear the Lord. Not just hear part of it, but to hear the whole thing. Amen. See, he had told them that they would be taken into captivity, but he also said it won't last. Amen. When the time is fulfilled, I will call you out of your captivity. You will come back into this land and Judah will live again. But you're going to have to go through something for a little bit. Amen. Such a thing had never happened before. They couldn't see how it could ever be. Amen. No nation in cities destroyed its populace, taken away and imprisoned in a distant land had ever survived and came back. Amen. But that doesn't matter because God said, watch and see if I don't do it. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. You know, God always is true to his word. Amen. Used to, used to say something to people all the time, you know, they'd be talking smack. You know, you'd get angry or whatever. you say, mess around and find out. You know, I'm about, I'm about to light you up. You know, God has just lit them up. But at the same time, he promised you, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you up out of this. But you got to learn some lessons. Amen. So... God said, I'm bringing you out. Watch and see if I don't do it. Well, it's never been done before, God. We've seen all these other nations. We've seen all this happen. Nothing's it. And it's never happened. But God said, I'm going to do it. One of the most powerful prophecies God gave to assure Israel that they would return is the famous vision Ezekiel had when he saw the Valley of Dry Bones. Amen. Ezekiel was taken to a hilltop overlooking a valley. Some horrible massacre had taken place. There was the field with this valley was filled with human bones. They were dead, dry human bones. The jackals and maybe even some lions had, had come and scattered them. They were scattered. There was no piece that matched any of the skeletal remains. None of, their, none of them was in their place. It was a vast chaos of bones and no order of hope of one. Ezekiel stood there looking at this hopeless situation and God says, can they live? Ezekiel replied, thou knowest. Jen, I've always thought Ezekiel was hedging, you know, his bets. You know, he, he didn't want to be wrong here. Didn't want to say the wrong thing. And so his reply was, thou knowest. Only you know, Lord. Yes. Amen. Only you know. I ain't about to step into this, Lord. You know us. I used to think that was being cautious. But I don't believe that anymore. All right? I think Ezekiel had come to recognize the fundamental truth of one thing. That there are situations so extreme that only God can put them back together. He understood if this is going to live, if this is going to do something, God is going to take you. I'm human. Amen. Only the power of God can bring order and resolution. Ezekiel wasn't questioning God's ability. He was bound to the fact that this there is going to be life here, Lord. It is going to be through the miracle that you have to do here tonight. Amen. He couldn't do it, but God could. He understood that, Lord, I can do nothing. I definitely can't do nothing without you. Amen. Only God knows how to bring life to a situation. Amen. It's dead. They're dry. They're, they've been sitting there for years. Lord, can these bones, he asked them, can they lean? Lord, you know. Only you know, Lord. Only you have the ability to. You spoke things into the existence. Amen. You're the author and the finisher of everything. Lord, so thou knowest. 
Amen. Only God knows how to bring life to a situation. It is possible, impossible for us to fix some things. Amen. And sometimes when we try to fix things, we just make more chaos. Amen. We only bring more trouble and pain in our lives when we try to do it ourselves. Ezekiel was saying, I'm just going to put, you, put this in your hands, God. It's time for me to decrease. I'm going to let you increase. I'm turning this over to you. I'm casting all my cares on you, Lord, because only you know, Lord. And I'm standing upon your word, Lord, that you're going to see this to, to the end. You see, it's time to quit obsessing. It's time to quit living in frustration. It's time to quit leaning on the arm of man. Why don't you just tell God, you know how to fix this, Lord? I don't. We get into situations and we look for answers. And it's, Lord, you fix the situation because truly I can't. Amen. If I got to trust you, God, you're going to take care of the situation. I'm casting all my cares upon you, Lord. All, you're all I need. Everything is fixed upon you and fixed upon you. God then told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. So Ezekiel preached. And all of a sudden, bones started moving across the valley to hook up with this other bone. And the right bones were connected, the finger back to the hand, the hand to the arm, the arm to the shoulder, until finally they had all come together. Now I could see that vision. Man, can you imagine the look on his face like, Lord, you're doing it. Amen. It's amazing. When we get into situations and we finally back out, we let God start fixing the situation and we say man Lord I would have never thought of doing it that way Lord you not only did you put it back together you put it right the way it should be amen I might have had the ear over the left ear on the right ear I mean you know we get involved we just cause chaos we just need to let God be God in every situation I know that's hard you know because life comes at us you know we think boy I got to be in charge it ain't about you being in charge. It's about being submitted to God and let God be God. Amen. Because only he can fix it. See, all of a sudden the bones are moving. See, where there had been chaos, now there was now order. Where there had been only a pile of bones, now there were fully formed skeletons. Then muscle and sinew. Skin appeared on these bones. And fully formed men lay lying in this valley floor. God wants me to tell you that faith is in his word. Not your word. Faith is going to come in here. You need to have faith in his word that God is going to send it. It will bring order to the chaos in your life because he always keeps his word. Amen. Just decrease. Back out of situations and let God take control. Amen. Because only God can fix it. When God fixes it, it's going to be done right. Amen. It's going to be done in order. Amen. It will bring order out of chaos in your life because he always keeps his word. Can they live? God asked again. And Ezekiel looked and wandered at the scene before him. And again he says, God, thou knowest. Lord, you know. The prophet answered the second time, still refusing to take matters into his own hand. Smart guy. Amen. Still insisting only God can do the work. So he preached to the wind, came the order, and Ezekiel did. And breath poured into the lungs. Hearts jump started and eyes sprang open. All across the valley they stood up, living, breathing men, a mighty army. This is what he did, he said he will do for Israel. God said, I will call you up out of your grave. Ain't no grave going to hold you when God's involved. Amen. No matter how hopeless the scenes, it is never beyond hope when God is in it. Amen. No matter what the past tells us, God always keeps his word. Amen. No matter how many times it seemed he did not come through, God always keeps his word. In the end, it was God has spoken. It is going to happen no matter what he has to do to bring it to pass. Trust and depend upon him. Take that word. You can take that word to the bank because it's going to happen. You hold on to that IOU. Amen. God's going to see it come to pass. Trust on it. Continue to see and continue to pray. Continue to get into work. Continue to come to church. Continue to fellowship and pray for each other because God's going to bring that word to pass. Amen. He has spoken and it's going to happen no matter what he has to do to bring it to pass. See, if the sun has to stop in its journey across the sky or if the Red Sea has to be parted, or if the shout brings down the walls, the city walls, or if a hungry lion's mouth has to be shut up and they lose their appetite, God keeps his word. Yeah. 
Amen. No matter what the situation is. Amen. The laws of nature will not prevent it. Past experience of life cannot dictate it. Amen. Get ready for it. God keeps his word. Amen. He keeps his word. He's faithful and he's just. Amen. Many years have passed. Generations came and went. Nebuchadnezzar was gone. The Babylonian Empire fell, conquered by the Medes and the Persians. Judah still lay quiet, a ruin and nearly uninhabited. But God kept promising, I will bring you back into the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Years. They're waiting. Where is this promise? A Persian king ascended to the throne of the empire. His name was Cyrus. He would change the course of history. No conqueror had ever released his praise, sending them back to the land from whence they came from. Resurrecting a destroyed nation had never been done. Amen. It was unheard of. It was simply never happened. It seemed folly, yet Cyrus did it. Amen. He declared that the Jews were free to go to return to their homes to rebuild, reestablish Judah. He said, shall, he said, shall live again. Judah's going to come back. Cities will rise from the ruins. Wells will be dug. Crops planted, and it happened. Amen. They have declared him a genius, a visionary, Cyrus. The historians have, as they've studied his motiva- motives and his motivation behind what he did. They see, his decision was a brilliant act of, sa- of statecraft that forever changed the way nations behave. Their theory is that he became unhappy with the land formerly known as Judah. Well, it was just a wasteland, unproductive for his kingdom. He determined to bring it back to its former richness. He, he wondered, how can I trust to make the land productive again? And in a flash of brilliance, I think God spoke to him, It occurred to him, who better than the people who loved the land, whose forefathers lived there, than to restore it. So instead of holding them captive any longer, he decided to let them go back in the hope that they would rebuild their land. And so he did so in making him rich. That's what historians say. But here's what really happened. Amen. God keeps his word. Amen. God keeps his word. See, the time came for Judah to return to the land of promise, so he stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. It seemed that one day a servant read to Cyrus from the prophecy of Isaiah. He began to read this passage from Isaiah 44 and 28 through Isaiah 45 and 5. Here's what the word says. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built. And to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the lions of kings, to open before him the two leaves gates, the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Cyrus took notice, and he began to tremble. Amen. When when, when were these words written? He asked the scribe. Oh, about a hundred years ago came the answer. When those words were written, nobody even knew that there would be a leader by the name of Cyrus. Amen. How could they have had not even, he had not even been born yet. In fact, the Babylonians were the world power when Isaiah wrote his prophecy, but Cyrus is a Persian name. Amen. How could they have understood the Medes and the Persians would conquer the Babylonian empire? Cyrus was so awed by God who could call him by name before he was ever born. Amen. 
and reveal that he would be the king of an empire before he was ever born, he immediately issued a proclamation declaring the Jews free to return to their homeland. It was not Cyrus, you see, who changed the course of history. It was God. Amen. And it was prophesied by Isaiah a hundred years before he was even thought of. Amen. Because God always keeps his word. Amen. He always keeps his word. It doesn't matter to God what he has to do. If he has to change the course of history, he'll do it. Amen. If he has to alter the relationships of empires and kingdoms, he'll do that too. Nothing is impossible with God. He can do anything and God always keeps his word. Amen. He's a promise keeper. God doesn't say something and it just falls short. He sees it through to the end. See, nothing is impossible with God. No, no wonder we are seeing great revival for the world word promises. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It's coming to pass, amen, because it's God's word. Amen. It's coming to pass not because of you and me, because God always keeps his words. No matter how hopeless the situation may seem, if you don't just keep, if you will just keep the faith and hold on a little bit longer, amen, God will do what he has promised. Don't give up. Don't give in, amen. God keeps his promise, amen. Don't let the situation that you find yourself in get you so frustrated and discouraged, amen. Hold to God's unchanging hand, amen. Walk with him. Talk with him. Continue to build that relationship because God keeps his word. Amen. Keep praying over your children. Keep praying for those lost loved ones. God's going to bring it to pass. Amen. You got to go. God has given you vision. God has given you dreams. Do not give up on them because God keeps his word. Amen. He's true to the end. He's true. Amen. God can do all things but fail. Amen. He's definitely not a liar. Amen. God is true to his word. Hold on to that word. Hold on to those promises. Amen. If God's given it to you, you keep it. You keep it, you hide it, and understand it's going to come to pass. Don't let circumstances bring you down. God always keeps his word. Ezekiel saw it come, and Isaiah told the world who would be God's instrument to accomplish it. But Jeremiah showed us how he to react to it. Amen. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet because of the gloominess of his preaching. Amen. His message was a simple one. God has, God has had enough, and the day of judgment is at hand. Amen. His pronouncements of the doom that overshadowed them were often expressed through allusions to the land. He often described the coming Babylonian captivity in images of abandoned, desolate landscapes. Judah became a wasteland. Then a strange thing happened in Jeremiah 32, 9 through 15. You'll stand with me. I'm getting ready to close. Amen. A strange thing happened in Jeremiah 32, 9 through 15. And he says, And I bought the field of Hanamel, my uncle's son, that was in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, even 17 shackles of silver. And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witness and weighed him the money, in the balance. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Nera, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Barak before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidence, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in the earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. After declaring that the land would be desolate, now there he is buying a piece of land. Amen. From a nephew carefully recording the sale and being certain that the records are well preserved. Why is he doing this? Because he declares that this land shall rise again. 
Amen. Jeremiah is telling us that we must buy into the promise of God. We got to give all we got. Amen. You got to get into, you got to buy into it. Amen. You got to sell your soul out to this because God is doing that. Amen. When God says, I want you, I want all of you. Amen. From top to bottom, I want it all. Amen. We must invest ourselves and our lives in the truth that God keeps his word. Amen. We are, we are sold out to this. Amen. We believe this word with every fiber we've got. We believe this Acts 238 message. We believe the promises of God. We know they're going to come to pass. We know that the trump of God is going to sound. And the, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first and then that remains shall be called up to meet him in the air and therefore they be forevermore. We hold on to the promise that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And where he is, we will be also. Amen. That's the promises of God. We got to hold on to them. Amen. We got to know that we got to do God's business while we're waiting for that trump to sound. Amen. We're sold out to this. We got to be invested with all that we have. Amen. Not just a little bit, not just halfway, but all the way. Amen. Invest in them. It's sold out to it. See, trust is not trust if it does not call some action. Some decision on our part, it will happen. Jeremiah is saying nothing can stop it, so invest it. Amen. It's going to happen. Amen. Invest in it. Give it all you got. Amen. I will put my time and my treasure in the face that God keeps his word. Amen. Keep digging those wells in that word. Keep digging those wells in prayer. Keep coming to the house of God. Keep being faithful to the things of God because God is true to his word. Amen. God keeps his word. God keeps his promises. Amen. Not just in our personal life, but as the body of Christ. There's a marriage supper of the Lamb coming. That's a promise. And if we're all invited, and if we got to be sold out, we got to be invested in this. I'm going to open up these altars. I'm going to ask you to come to find a place to pray. Invest. Continue to pray. Continue to seek. Continue to do the work of God. Lord, we love and we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for our heart and our mind, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, that you stir our hearts every day, Lord, that we'll just not be hearers of your word, but we'll be doers also, Lord. Lord, continue to tear down every stronghold, Lord. Continue to cast down every imagination, Lord. Continue to build us up where we're weak, Lord. Maintain us where we're strong, Lord. Filter the things we hear, the things we see, the things we come in contact with. Lord, help this world not to have an influence upon us, Lord, but help us through the Holy Ghost to have an influence upon them, Lord. Lord, to share your word, to share your promises, Lord. Your return, Lord, your return is soon, Lord. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, Lord, in an hour that we think not, Lord, stir the hearts of your people, Lord. Prepare us to be ready, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you touch our lost loved ones, Lord. Jesus, open up their hearts and their minds, Lord. Dry up the desires for the things of this world, Lord. Lord, open up their hearts, Lord, to you, Lord, to move and to minister, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. Lord, continue, Jesus, to help us to be about your business, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find somebody right now. Pray for somebody right now. Encourage them in this battle, in this everyday life. Come on, find somebody. Let's pray together for one.